So this is my mini Bitcoin USB miner solo mining rig that I finally got around to building. And it has been one of those projects that I've wanted to do for months. And now when I finally got around to doing it, it literally took me like 15 minutes to get it all set up. So in this video, I want to talk about what this is, how it works, why I got one and how a setup like this has the potential to make you roughly $300,000 in mining income if you're lucky. And no sponsor for this video, but I did get all these parts from BitcoinMerch.com. So shout out to them. I'll, I'll tell you more about the parts in just a little bit, but first Let's talk about what is actually going on here. So this is basically a Raspberry Pi, a sort of mini computer with a few Bitcoin USB miners plugged into it that I've got set up to solo mine Bitcoin. I built this partly because I wanted it to be solo mining Bitcoin, partly because I thought this thing would look really cool in the background of my video studio here, and partly because I think the concept behind these is very interesting and I wanted to make another video about it. And if that whole solo mining Bitcoin USB Raspberry Pi thing you sounded like gibberish you, don't worry, I'm gonna break it all down for you. Starting with the basics. Right now the reward for finding a block when mining Bitcoin is 6.25 BTC or I believe a little bit over $300,000 at today's coin price. But there are two problems with that. The first one is that nowadays you need very expensive specialized ASIC miners to mine Bitcoin profitably. And secondly, when mining normally you'd usually only get paid a tiny share of that $300,000 block reward because most commonly nowadays you'd be mining in what's called a mining pool, which is where a bunch of people join up and mine together. The problem there is that the pool only gets paid when one of the people in the pool finds a block, and the pool then takes the reward from that block and divides it out among all the active miners on the pool, and how much each of you get is relative to the amount of mining power, or hash rate, you provided to the pool. However, if you want, you can skip that whole process and do what's called solo mining, which basically means that you are only getting paid when, or if, you personally actually find a block. But when you do, you get to take home that full block reward all to yourself. So what decides who actually finds the block? Well, explained in very simple terms, for every new block about to be written on the Bitcoin blockchain, a random number is picked, it is then up to all the machines around the world that are currently mining Bitcoin to guess what that number is. And whoever manages to guess that number first gets to write the block and take home that 6.25 Bitcoin block reward. Every one of these guesses at the target is what's called a hash, which is where we get the term hash rate, which refers to the amount of guesses your mining rig makes per second. Theoretically, almost anything that has some sort of digital chip and a way to connect to the internet could send hashes off and try to guess this target number. Problem is that the more people who are mining Bitcoin, or rather, the more hashes that are sent to try and guess the target, the harder that target becomes to guess. This is generally what we refer to as the network difficulty, how difficult it is for a single hash to correctly guess the target and win the block. And of course, the higher your hash rate, meaning the more guesses you send per second, the more likely you are to guess the number correctly. However, theoretically, you could still guess the right number with just one single guess if you got extremely lucky. So when you are pool mining, you get together with a bunch of other people and at that point it's pretty likely that every once in a while at least one person on the pool will hit a block and when they do, you divide the reward from that block equally. It's a way of removing that luck factor from mining, basically. Solo mining, on the other hand, is exactly the opposite. You're just mining on your own, hoping that you'll find a block. But if you do, you get to keep the whole block reward for yourself. And that's where these things come in. So, these are Gecko Science Compact F Bitcoin USB miners, and what they are, basically, it's just someone taking one of those big Bitcoin ASIC mining machines that are full of Bitcoin mining chips and putting one of those chips on a USB stick. So you're obviously getting a lot less mining power, aka hash rate, from one of these sticks than you would from a Bitcoin ASIC miner, but this is still a legitimate piece of Bitcoin mining hardware. And that means that we can set this thing up to solo mine, and even though perhaps not very likely, it is fully possible for it to hit a block, in which case you'd be rewarded the full block reward all to yourself. The upside is that these things barely use any power at all. I believe it's something like 5 to 15 watts per stick. So it's been getting more popular recently to just set a few of these up, 
hoping for the small chance of it actually hitting a block would happen to you. A lot of people actually liken it to playing the lottery, referring to it as the Bitcoin mining lottery. Now, the difference between a regular lottery and the Bitcoin mining lottery is that in a regular lottery, a ticket is only valid one time. But with solo mining Bitcoin like this, basically you get a new chance to win for every new block, or basically every 10 minutes. So it's kind of like entering a lottery where, like in any lottery, the chance to win might be pretty small, but you do get a new chance to win every 10 minutes. And of course, the more hash rate you have, in other words, the more of these USB sticks you have, the higher the likelihood of you winning actually becomes. So what do I actually have here? Well, this is a product put together by BitcoinMerch.com called the Mars Lander. And it is basically a nice looking, well, at least to me it's nice looking, display piece comprised of one of those compact F USB miners plugged into a Raspberry Pi mini computer with a small display and some cool light effects. They basically developed this product to be a very easy way to get people into solo mining Bitcoin. As setting this up is extremely simple, I'll talk you through it in just a little bit. The display shows this cute little animation of a dog mining for coins, and then it cycles through your hash rate, Bitcoin's current price, and if you've hit a block or not. But this thing has an open USB port on the side, and here you can plug in a USB hub with additional USB miners in order to increase your hash rate, and therefore your odds of finding a block. And that is exactly what I've done here. More specifically, I have their kit of 6 additional USB miners with the 10 port USB hub and the RGB fans. It is very important when you get one of these USB miners, by the way, that you plug them into a powered USB hub that can deliver enough wattage to these things. Now, as I'm sure you've noticed, one of my fans are different. I think I must have asked for the wrong thing or something, so Bitcoin merch, if you're watching, do you think I could please have an additional RGB fan? Moving on, for those of you who are curious, each of these USB sticks give you about 250 giga hash of hash rate. So that's 250 billion guesses at the Bitcoin block target per second. And for those of you doing the math, that means my full rig here of seven USB miners, one on the Mars Lander unit and six in the external USB hub, gets a total of 1,800 giga hash or 1.8 terahash. I'll link these products down in the video description and Bitcoin Merch also provided a discount code for any of you guys that might be interested. So I'll leave that down there too. I believe it gives you something like 4% off your whole order. Now, full disclosure, those links down there will be affiliate links, meaning I do get a small commission on anything you purchase at no extra cost to you. Well, with the discount code, it actually ends up costing you less. So I guess basically a win-win. And as I said in the intro, setting these things up was stupidly easy and quick. I've messed with things like this before and I was kind of expecting it to be a pain. A lot of you guys might remember my previous video where I showed you how to set up solo mining Bitcoin on a graphics card and how annoyingly complicated that was. But I feel like setting this up couldn't have been any easier and I kind of feel dumb for putting it off for so long just because I expected it to be difficult. Basically, all you have to do is plug the Mars Lander unit into power somewhere close to your Wi-Fi router. The device then realizes this is the first time it's being powered on and it creates its own little Wi-Fi network. It might take a couple of minutes for it to boot up that first time though, so just be patient. It then shows you on the little display the name of the Wi-Fi it created and tells you what to do. Basically, you just need to connect your phone or computer to that new Wi-Fi and then it tells you an IP number that you need to type into your web browser's address field. You then get a page where you can select your real Wi-Fi network that you want the Mars Lander to connect to so that it can get internet access, fill in the password for that Wi-Fi, and finally, you just need to copy in your Bitcoin wallet address that you want the block reward to be paid into if you were to get lucky and hit a block. Then you just hit save settings and that is basically it. It will then reboot and start mining within a few minutes. So that's basically all that I did. And after that, I just moved it to where I wanted it, plugged in the external USB hub with all the additional USB miners, and it detected all those USB miners on its own. And my hash rate went from around 250 giga hash to 1800 giga hash on the little display. So now I just leave this thing in the background of my videos here. And if I get lucky, one day I'll wake up with a nice 6.25 Bitcoin in my wallet. Now, I know a lot of you are probably wondering how likely it actually is to hit a block with a setup like this. So let's find out by going to this website called solochance.com. And on here, you can just fill in your hash rate. So for me, that's 1800 giga hash per second and then hit go. As you can see here, my chance per block is about one in 280 million 
or per day it's about 1 in 1.95 million. Now I want to compare this with just straight up winning the lottery, which depending on what system the lottery of your choice uses, usually gives you between a 1 in 14 million to 1 in 176 million chance. And as I said earlier, a lottery ticket is just a one-off chance, but in solo mining you get a new chance for every block. So relatively speaking, that recurring chance of 1 in 195 million doesn't really seem that bad. And it basically means that, theoretically, on average, I should hit one block once every 5,346 years. Now, I want to clarify here that that doesn't mean that it will take 5,346 years before I hit a block. It could happen in just one second. It just means that statistically, I should have hit at least one block after 5,346 years. But when that happens during those 5,346 years is, well, luck based. Could happen tomorrow for all that we know. And if you still think that that sounds impossible, well, I actually have an interview with a person who really did hit a block with nothing but USB miners like these. I'll link that video on the screen there, as well as my video showing you how to set up a graphics card to solo mine Bitcoin here. You can also subscribe for more fun mining videos like this one. But that's it. Thanks for watching.